Hello everyone. To get your advanced Canadian drone license, there are basically two main hurdles that you have to overcome. The first one is the big exam and I told you all about that in the previous video. Now the second one is the flight review. You have to go and see a flight reviewer the flight reviewer has a set of rules that he has to follow, guidelines on uh, what he needs to test you on, what he needs to do, what you need to be able to demonstrate. And well, you can easily find that set of rules. It's uh, published and the link is in the description. I recommend before you prepare for this, just read that because that'll get you the awareness you need about the whole thing it's not too complicated and it's actually i found it a lot easier than the big test online however that was only because i prepared for it because i can imagine that if you just stumble in there thinking well i can fly my drone i'm just going to give it a whirl well you probably have to pay for that again and the flight review will cost you anywhere from, uh, I want to say, 150 to three, four hundred dollars, and you don't want to spend that too many times. Of course, again, you can retake this after 24 hours in case you fail. But if you fail one aspect of the whole thing, then you have to redo the entire test. It doesn't count toward the next one, so to say. Now, what do you have to do to prepare for that? I'll show you something. See, the emphasis on that flight review was not only on how you can fly your drone. That is a big part of it. And it's not that hard. It's basic maneuvers. You know, you will basically uh, decide what kind of a mission you're going to do then a flight reviewer might ask you to do a little bit of additional stuff like fly around the soccer field, for example. Then he's going to pick an object, say it's a playground or something, and then ask you to point the camera toward that, fly all the way around it while you keep the camera steady on that spot manually. You also have to be able to take off and land your drone manually without uh, the auto return to home or anything like that. You do not have to demonstrate the ability to control your drone in ADI mode, which would be off the GPS. I think that used to be a requirement. However, with the DJI drone, I don't even think you can anymore. I haven't been able to do that. I'm not hacking my drones or anything. What did I bring to the flight review and what was the main thing? What I have here is a binder. Let me just get my drone off of my back here. Yeah, see this is my drone. It's in here, the whole kit, the DJI Air 2S. We're going to put this down for now. Anyways, this is the binder that I prepared. It is based basically on the Drone Pilot Canada app, but see the first thing I have here is the registration certificate for my drone. Next, I have my pilot certificate. This is now the advanced one. It was uh, the uh, basic one before. What you also need to show the flight reviewer is your test results from the online test. So I had all this already in a binder. Then I have here key rules, basic operations, key rules, advanced operations, a special flight operation certificate when they are needed, visual observer responsibilities. By the way, you are allowed to bring a visual observer which can be very useful because see the emphasis of this flight review is actually on your checklists and procedures you go through them step by step and then you go by the checklist also you have to have your checklists so the drone pilot canada app and again 
link in the description, is worth gold. See, I had this, what to call these, it's a marker, but it's, it's erasable. So for my checklist, instead of having this on the app, I had it printed out. And then uh, it's in a page protector so that it doesn't crinkle or, or get destroyed. So then I would check it off just like I normally would and then I can easily erase it after with this. In order to find things faster, I got these tabs on here, color coded. That was also helping my visual observer, Barbara, to find the stuff faster because she was actually reading the checklist and uh, the procedures as I was going through them. That is totally allowed. So you might want to take advantage of it. To show that you're safety minded, it is perhaps a good idea to bring one of those, a safety vest. This is a good thing to have. I had this with me for the flight review. I did not put it on, wasn't required. I also had a little first aid kit, just in case, you know, you get your fingers in the propeller, whatnot, safety minded. That's what it's about. Dollar store cones. I put them all around our area where I was taking off from. I also had a little folding table that I didn't bring it today. It's, it's actually in the car still. It is still useful for like operations where say I get paid or something. I can set up my stuff there, the binder, the, the whole shebang. What else? I had my landing pad because I was taking off from a lawn. You will be required to land the drone. It's not necessary to hand catch it and it might actually hinder your success because trying to prove something that perhaps you shouldn't be. All you have to do is what the flight reviewer asks of you and hand catching the drone is not part of it. Land it. Land it in a certain spot. And well, if you're a little bit off the pad, it's no big deal. Just the, the rough area and um, very important is that you don't just do your thing with the controller, land the drone. You have to actually make sure that everybody's aware the drone is coming in, stand back, you know. You have to have these procedures and the Drone Pilot Canada app is worth gold for this because it's all in there, you know, you have that. You have no worries. You just have to go through the process. What else? Fire extinguisher. It shows the flight reviewer that you have thought about the safety aspect of uh, this drone operation. And the thing with that is that um, the LiPo batteries can, under certain circumstances, catch fire. So you're prepared for that. Do I take the fire extinguisher with me every time I fly the drone? No, absolutely not. This was just an exam preparation. Some flight schools will insist you have an aviation radio and conveniently rent one to you for the exam. While a radio can be used in emergency situations, I believe this is a scam. Wow. If you want to bring your radio, leave that to your visual observer as it would be nothing but a distraction. At present, having a radio is not required. As an alternative, you can monitor air traffic radio via lifeatc.net if ever needed. There's a link in the description. So, yeah, what can you expect? There's a mock survey that you have to do. And I believe I still have that in here as well. What it was, was a site survey for a site where I've never been to. And uh, I can see on uh, the GAF drone site selection tool or in the Drone Pilot Canada app, I can see right away that it is within 1.9 kilometers of two different aerodromes, the hospital, heliport and uh, the other one was children's hospital i think so two hospitals nearby you're right in there so what you have to do is 
prepare the site survey as if you were hired to do some drone photography of a building in that area. Important is to know where you get the permission to fly there, who to contact, what kind of information to have on hand in case things go wrong. You can have all the phone numbers of the heliports, for example. You have to have a procedure in case you lose the connection. In case you lose the connection to your drone and it takes off toward the heliport. So what do you do now? What's the procedure, you know? Be prepared to answer questions like that. That is almost as important as you being able to fly your drone. So it's a, it's a matter of awareness. It's a matter of knowing what to do when things go wrong. Well, it's all good stuff that you need for safe drone operation anyways, because you never know, right? Also, you have to have something to keep a record of your flight. Of course, you can have a little booklet where you write everything in it manually. Well, I have my iPad. It's actually in here. But I also have the Drone Pilot Canada app on my phone, so you could definitely do that. You can even have your pilot certificate and your drone registration on here. It's perfectly acceptable. However, I found it easy to have it all in here. It, it just gave me the feeling that, yes, I don't have to fiddle with my phone. What if the sun is so bright I can't see my screen or, say, uh, the, the battery dies or whatever? Uh, it's all here. Another thing to make sure is that you know exactly where your flight review is taking place. I don't know if you'll be able to choose your own site. In my city there's a bylaw, you can't just fly everywhere. So this guy that did mine, his name is Jay. Uh, he works with a company that, a name I don't remember, but there's a link in the description. I was very pleased with him. Of course, I passed. But um, like he does it in a park in a city nearby here, Spruce Grove, where there is no bylaw against flying there. So of course you have to have a time when um, it's not super busy, but it was good there. You also have to be aware of the weather. Say you have it scheduled for a Sunday morning, okay? And you wake up that day, you check your weather app or you look outside and it's raining buckets and it's a big storm or whatever, you know, extreme weather. Well, it's up to you to contact your flight reviewer and tell them that, no, it's not safe today. We're not going to go with, through with this today because you'll be also, you'll be judged on your judgment. That's what I'm trying to say. So it's all about flying safely, flying in a way that you control your drone. I think you'll pass. I think you'll pass. Just be aware that you have to be prepared. And I hope this video, while I'm, I'm not the best talker, I, you know, but I hope it gives you what you need to show up there prepared. And, and I know you'll be nervous. That's totally normal, but try to put it into perspective. You know, if you fail, it's not the end of the world. You can retake the test. You know what, it's probably also a good idea if you talk to your flight reviewer on the phone or, yeah, even if you communicate via email, get a good impression of uh, what kind of a person that might be. I have heard that there might be some that, that are like drill sergeants. Mine was the total opposite. He was very conversational, very good. And, um, that's kind of what you want, you know. You want to be able to demonstrate that you've done your homework, but at the same time, nobody is perfect. If you make a minor mistake and stuff, you, you don't want this guy to dig in on it and fail you. Well, I hope this video helps. If it does, just touch the like button gently. And then if you like, you can also subscribe to my channel. It's totally free, no obligations. Yeah. I appreciate your support. Thank you very much.